So here are some hints on uh, sapling learning question number eight that we were working today in class. So we uh, pretty much got through the first part of uh, question eight right here using this equation that tells us that the equilibrium constant k is related to delta g naught. So remember that the delta g naught up here is telling us that we're in standard state conditions. And so that means that all substances are at one bar pressure and um, <clears throat> one mole per liter for concentrations. And we're going to assume that the standard state is tabulated at a particular temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. So in order to answer the second part to this question, um, we need to remind ourselves or learn some stuff about some properties of delta G. So you will recall that when delta G is less than zero negative, that we have a spontaneous process. If delta G is positive, then we have an unfavorable process, a non-spontaneous process. And if delta G is exactly equal to zero, then we've got a process that is at equilibrium. So neither the forward direction nor the reverse direction of that process is favored. We would be at equilibrium. So there is a more general equation that relates delta G to uh, changes in temperature and composition. And it's given by this equation. So it says that delta G under non-standard state conditions is equal to the delta G under standard state conditions. So we're going to say delta G zero. And then we need to add in a correction. And so that correction is plus R, the gas constant, times T, the Kelvin temperature, times the natural log of Q. And Q is the reaction quotient. So we've talked about that a little bit. So the reaction quotient would be the ratio of products to reactants, just like we would write an equilibrium constant expression, only it need not be at equilibrium. So it's at some other position. So in this case, we're going to consider that at some different temperature. So we're going to apply this equation to calculate the answer for delta G for the bottom question. So in order to do that, we need to do delta G naught. And we were given that as part of our reaction. It's up here, so delta G naught is negative 6.730. And um, usually we use the value of R in joules per mole, so 8.3145 joules per mole. So I either need to convert that R or convert our uh, value of delta G naught from kilojoules into joules. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll convert it. Actually, we want our answer in kilojoules. So let's go ahead and put everything in kilojoules. We'll leave it that way. So this is going to be kilojoules per mole, and then plus R. Now we want to convert R into kilojoules. So that's going to be 8.3145. It was in joules, so I'm going to divide by 1,000. So that's times 10 to the negative third when you divide it by 1,000 kilojoules per mole degree Kelvin. Very good. That's R. And now T, our Kelvin temperature. So we're at 37 degrees Celsius. And remember, we add 273 um, to that to convert to Kelvins. And so that's 310 Kelvin for our temperature. And now we're going to take the natural log of the reaction quotient. So the reaction quotient <coughs> is going to be the concentration of B raised to the first power divided by the concentration of A raised to the first power. <coughs> and we get that just by raising, just by looking at uh, this reaction up here and writing down something that looks like an equilibrium constant expression. Only these are not equilibrium concentrations. So sometimes I designate that by using um, regular old parentheses instead of square brackets. But it's the moles per liter. And we were given what those values were. So for B, we could plug in 0.7 moles per liter. And for A, the concentration is 1.7 moles per liter. And so everything on the right-hand side of this equation are numbers. And we can plug in those numbers and calculate the value of delta G in units of kilojoules per mole, because the Kelvins will cancel. This has kilojoules per mole, which we're adding to something that has units of kilojoules per mole. So that's how we work the second part of question eight.